what since the second half really how much they've really struggled charged with finding some stability from this welcome back to the next episode of the journey of a grassroots rugby coach more track suits less business suits and today i'm speaking with brett gallagher brett's been involved with grassroots rugby for about 25 years he's been the general manager at southern districts in the shoot shield and he's also been the head of their Colts program there. Brett has worked in game and play development with both the Waratahs and the Western Force. He's also been involved with the Lloyd McDermott Foundation for a number of years, and we spoke about the joy he had coaching some Indigenous players and the National Indigenous team. We also spoke about keeping a journal, chatting with other coaches, and having, an inf having the opportunity to influence others and understanding what motivates players. I took a lot away from this chat with Brett, and I hope you do too. And again, thanks for listening. Probably be a, a really magical moment. Um, mate, coaching uh, Indigenous teams. So I was lucky enough to coach the uh, be head coach of the it was 2016 um, National Indigenous Schoolboys. Um, we, we competed at, um, at Riverview College there in the second division. Um, made every moment and it's, yeah, I think it was from about uh, 2003, 2004, but uh, every moment with those Indigenous athletes is, is special, mate. They are freakish in nature as far as their athleticism and uh, <clears throat> just have an innate understanding uh, quite often of uh, where to be on a football field. So yeah, um, we certainly don't have enough Indigenous boys in rugby, so trying to develop a pathway, I, I found really special there, mate. And Nobody can't find it. That's a mighty shot. A mighty Mark Lester. All right, mate, let's, um, let's make a start on the good stuff. All right. Yep. So, mate, thanks for joining me, gals. Um, so just for the listeners out there that may not know who you are, can you just give me 30 seconds of... The Brett Gallagher story, where you are, um, what's your involvements with uh, rugby, grassroots rugby, all that stuff you've done over the, the many years you've been involved? Yeah, no worries, mate. Um, I've been involved in grassroots rugby, I guess, from a career perspective for close to 25 years now. Uh, I've worked at the, uh, the Waratahs, um, uh, Western Force, uh, in community rugby development, development manager, DO, um, education, so um, coach and match official education. Uh, done a lot of work for Lloyd McDermott Rugby Development Team, which is Indigenous Rugby Development, and uh, had a long history of, uh, uh, I guess, volunteering and working down at Southern Districts, mate, as a player, uh, coach, and administrator. Um, also, uh, from a junior perspective, uh, gone through with my both my, my sons in rugby league and uh, rugby union as a, um, a coach for, for Baroneer and so there's Baroneer Juniors and um, uh, the Sutherland Pirates and also Joondalup Brothers when I was over in Perth. Nice, nice. Um, so let's start with the easy questions, mate. Um, how did you get into coaching? Uh, mate, I actually first got into it when I was as a player. So I was lucky enough to, to pick up some development officer positions with Southern District. So that was back in the day where the, um, the clubs used to get a grant, I believe it was from New South Wales Rugby, uh, to, that went towards development. And um, so 95, 96, I worked as a casual DO uh, for Southern Districts. Uh, whilst I was playing there. And then in 97, I, um, I, I went over to Sydney Uni and under uh, Manu Sutherland, uh, Chiefy, um, who was their, their club coach. I worked as a uh, DO there as well. So uh, Chiefy suggested I go and do a level one, which was 1997. So I did that. I actually got injured that year and walked away from, from rugby for, for uh, a number of years. I got back involved in 2001 as a coach um, uh, for Baroneer under 17. So that stage was about 29. So reasonably uh, young and definitely green behind the ears, mate. But um, yeah, got uh, got involved down at Borough. And from there, um, 
yeah, loved it and decided I wanted to work in rugby and ended up getting uh, some, some, work, some work experience initially with Lloyd McDermott and um, then got into some, some paid work in, uh, I guess, event management pathway development for Lloydies, mate. Yeah, nice. Um, and like you, you did some work for the Western Force, and that's where we met um, uh, when, when you're in Perth. So I've, I've known you for, for quite a while. Um, yes, yep. And I'll, I'm going to swing back to that stuff you do with Lloyd McDermott. So I just want to get some info out on them because it's a really good um, program from what I've seen. So we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later. For sure. Um, <clears throat> What's one of the biggest heartaches or the dis one of the biggest disappointments you've had um, as a coach? Mate, um, I, look, there's, I, I don't reckon I have massive disappointments. Um, yep. I think a couple that come to mind, uh, it's, it's funny, one's in the junior space and then there's uh, a couple in, um, I guess, that shoot shield space. So, uh, it might sound really silly, mate, but um, my son's uh, under 14 team uh, losing, uh, mate, they lost three grand finals in a row, um, oh. 14s, 15s and, and 16s. So the first couple of those uh, hurt. And pr probably the first one, mate, um, as a coach, felt a bit, a little bit robbed, uh, a bit cheated. And, mate, that took a couple of weeks to, to, to get over. Kept waking up in the morning thinking, oh, I should have done this, should have done that. Um, similarly, it was uh, for, for Southern Districts, I was working with Matt Barr as a, an assistant uh, coach in 2015. We led uh, Eastwood by 20 points to nil um, and went down, I think it was 32-27 or something in the end. Uh, that, that was to get into a grand final. And then the following year, we went down to North, similar situation, same game, and uh, led early and then butchered it to, to, a, to a degree. Uh, I, th th I think it'd be fair to say any of the players probably felt that. Two golden opportunities to, to make grand finals and, um, yeah, lost some, some, some key moments in those games. And uh, definitely those two. I think the Norse one... Off the back of Eastwood the year before, that, that took a few weeks to get over as well. You know, you wake up and immediately the, the first thing that comes to mind is, uh, yeah, losing that, that fixture. And yeah, it took a few weeks to, to, to get over. Yeah, some of those ones are hard to take. Um, like you said, especially those like three back-to-back -back grand final losses. Um, and yeah, those, those games where you're in front. Um, we had a similar one here. We the year I had the Colts down here, um, we'd beaten the top team every time we played them. We finished fourth. We played, it was a like 1v4, 2v3, the two winners play each other. Yes, yep. We we gave them a 20 point start and got beat by five points. Yeah, It's yep. just like, oh, yeah, that, you know, that 15, 20 minutes of footy was just like the whole season. Yeah. Yeah, so, you'd, you'd, you'd hope to think leading by 20 points in a semi-final that you're good enough to uh, to, to, yeah. to get the money. But, uh, yeah, I know. It's, yeah. Certainly opportunities missed, mate. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there would have been some lessons learned by um, not just yourself, but some of the players as well, uh, especially the shoot shield stuff. Yeah, I um, look, we... We made semis again in 17 um, and we, we we bowed out first semi. I, I think as far as lessons, whilst we might have learned some lessons, I'm not sure that we're able to apply them to, to the air. <laughs> I think um, that took the wind out of our sails a little bit and, yeah, uh, yeah mentally probably rattled us uh, somewhat. But, um um, yeah, tough one. I, I think um, that the Eastwood uh, game in 2015, um, yeah, I just think we, we weren't ruthless enough and that probably cost us again then in 2017. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure we're able to, I guess, replicate our, our seasons uh, through 15 and 16, but um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's interesting. Um, and again, that these are chats for other days around mindsets of players and 
yeah, they're, they're rabbit holes that you can you can go right into. Um, so let's flip that on its head, mate. What's some of the greatest moments you've had as a coach? Yeah, I, I sort of thought about this for quite a bit and got some some nice moments as far as late victories, etc., which I'll mention. But I mean, I like every uh, session, I, I think, is a great moment, uh, particularly in junior space. You get that opportunity to uh, influence. Uh, and it's not 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 just the on-field uh, area. I, I think uh, we're we're realizing that uh, as coaches, that um, yeah, it goes a, a lot deeper than that uh, in a mentoring role. I, I know. So I've got two young boys. One's seventeen. One's thirteen. And uh, I've coached them for long periods. But uh, I, I certainly know. And I'm very hard, particularly on my older boy, and uh, particularly hard on him, uh, Ethan. But um, he loves his footy and he, he takes it, uh, he generally takes it quite well. But I, I know that the the input we get from other coaches um, probably sinks into him a, a little bit more than what uh, that the messages I deliver. So I, I, I feel like that's a really important focus for the rest of the team. I know that their dads are in similar situations wanting to, to get messages through to their sons that they've learned throughout the years and not just coaching wise, but just being a uh, generally a, a good person. So they yeah, really try to influence those uh, young boys and uh, young men. Um, oh, mate, um, as far as uh, some some great moments with uh, on field. We we had a win over Sydney Uni in 2015 after the bell. Jordan McGregor slotted a uh, oh geez it would have been about a 48 meter penalty. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, from from not not far from the sideline and close to the halfway line uh, on the bell. This was after uh, young Matt Gibbon. Uh, won a tight head penalty uh, over Paddy Ryan, so that was uh, that was pretty special. Um, I had a few of those moments with, with Southern Districts. We got out of jail uh, a number of times. Rowan Cyphery uh, knocking over some penalties against Ramwick and Manly after the bell, and um, um, yeah, Christian Kagiasis uh, as well at Kuji Oval, uh, beating uh, Ramwick after the bell. So had some that those moments always pretty. Uh, pretty cool, pretty special. Mate, I'd love to win a title with Southern Districts, whether uh, coaching or as an administrator or just, yeah, a title uh, with them would probably be a, a really magical moment. Um, mate, coaching uh, Indigenous teams. So I was lucky enough to coach the, uh, be head coach of the, it was 2016 um, National Indigenous Schoolboys. Um, we, we competed at, um, at Riverview College there in the second division. Um, made every moment. And it's, yeah, I think it was from about uh, 2003, 2004. But uh, every moment with those Indigenous athletes is, is special, mate. They are freakish in nature as far as their athleticism and uh, <clears throat> just have an innate understanding uh, quite often of... Uh, where to be on a football field. So, yeah, um, we certainly don't have enough Indigenous boys in rugby. So trying to develop a pathway, I, I found really special there, mate. And we coached the um, the National Indigenous Women's Team. We took them over to New Zealand in 2004. And um, I nearly had a mutiny on my hands at uh, one stage bully. But, um, um, yeah, we, we, we worked through that. And, uh, that, that was about some girls were there for a holiday, some wanted to win um, as much as I do, and we had to find a bit of a balance. But, um, yeah, that, that was pretty cool going away on tour of, uh, with them. Particularly, that was an early stage in, I guess, my co coaching career. And, um, yeah, learned, uh, learned a few hard lessons. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, certainly very magical, mate. So let's just, <clears throat> let's just talk about the um, Lloyd McDermott Foundation there for a bit, mate. Um, yes, yep. A lot of people wouldn't probably have never heard of it or wouldn't know um, what it's about. Um, yep. I, I know a little bit about it, and I, yep. it, from what I've read, it's an outstanding program. Definitely. Um, so, if you just want to give us a little bit of a rundown um, on what that, what the Lloyd McDermott Foundation is. Yeah. So, Lloyd McDermott was uh, our first indigenous 
indigenous wallaby. Uh, he was also uh, the, the, the first indigenous barrister. And um, so the, the foundation named after him, uh, Lloydie uh, passed a couple of years ago, mm. but um, um, a wonderful man. And uh, he put his, uh, certainly put a, a time and effort into uh, assisting develop that program. Uh, he's certainly a great role model for young indigenous uh, athletes and um, boys and girls, uh, as far as making a, um, um, an opportunity he came from, um, yeah, a, a pretty, uh, working class background and, um, yeah, made, made every post a winner. Uh, Tom Evans, um, is somebody that has, uh, Oh, had a long history with uh, Lloydies. He was the executive officer there for, for a number of years. And I worked after, um, I worked under Tommy. Um, had some great support from uh, various people. Uh, Warren Rebilliard, uh, Matt Grimerson, uh, both uh, Rugby AU people. And um, also Jared Hodges, uh, been instrumental in, in that program. Um and basically, they're, they're just about uh, growing the, the pathway and developing the, the game in Indigenous communities. There's a real big focus on what goes on off-field. Uh, it's not just yeah. about uh, ideal, IDing talent. But um, look, they've had uh, probably a few lean years recently, uh, Lodi's, and certainly trying to uh, resurrect uh, that that program at the moment. And I know Tommy Evans is back again, putting uh, a lot of time and effort into it, uh, as are the uh, the board of directors there. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful program. As I said, I don't think we've got enough uh, Indigenous athletes running around in our game. So anything that promotes the game to the Indigenous community, I think is a, a real good one. Yeah, and so I played for a little bit in the Northern Territory before I went to WA and then in WA. And I think the reason there's not enough Indigenous players in our game is because they're bloody good at whatever sport they, they yeah. want to play. Like, I was playing against guys, like, in the 80s and the 90s, and they'd play rugby, they'd play league, they'd play AFL, they'd play cricket, and they play in any rep team because they're just, like you said, they're just that naturally gifted athletes. And I think... Yes. Yeah. You know, they're just so good at whatever sport they they do. So it's really hard to nail them into just going, come and come play rugby. Um, but yeah, mate, there's been some really good Indigenous players come through and I think we need to do as much as we can to, to get more of them involved in our game. Um, yep. Like you said, even for the communities um, and, and the people around there. Because you can see the, um, you can see the impact that, the rugby community can have on like the Pacifica communities and all those other communities that are involved in it as well. So bringing more indigenous players in the game is going to have that same effect. Yeah. In, in their, you, know, you know what I mean? It's just that whole big part, that whole big family thing that, yes, that we yeah. pride ourselves on. But yeah. Yeah. We talk, weren't um, so good at everything, mate. We, we might snag a few. Yeah. Look, um, I, I absolutely. And, yeah, I think a um, big part of it's about connecting with, with communities and yep. yeah, putting in the groundwork there. Um, it's, uh, we took uh, Barony have an under-14s tour every year. They go over to, to Fiji. Obviously, that's uh, on hold in the current uh, situation, but we took uh, my son's under-14 team over to Fiji. And uh, i got to say, it was one of the most magical experiences for, for me. I'd never been to Fiji before. Obviously, um, I dealt with a lot of Fijian uh, boys and, and men, for that matter, um, particularly over in Perth uh, through rugby um, and built some qu quite a few strong relationships, actually. But, um, yeah, heading to Fiji and being introduced to, to, to their culture uh, and... Yeah, mate, I, I just was was fascinated. We we played some uh, games over at Sigatoka over there, and mate, I'll never forget a couple of boys um, walking into Sigatoka Stadium, watching the the lads walk down from from their village from from the hills, and um, yeah, it was just uh, mate, they, they were throwing a dead frog to each other. There's no um, no joke. They, they, yeah, we we had like we had about. 15 footies for, for the boys thrown around. They're all kitted up and the boys rocked up barefoot um, and then uh, proceeded to put us to, to the sword. And 
mate, we're, we're an under 14s team. All our boys were um, turning 14, if not already 14. They would have 12 year olds running around and they were bashing uh, the living hell out of us and uh, running around us. And mate, it, it was fantastic for our boys. After the game, um, big sing along and um, big ceremony. And it was, yeah, it was really cool. And it, you also get that from your, your um, First Nations people here. Yeah. If you, um, yeah, dip your toe into to the culture. It's it's pretty pretty special. Yeah, there's yeah. I remember some times from up there. There's some pretty pretty unique and wonderful things that happen. Um, Made awesome cultural stuff. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, but stuff you just go, whoa, that's just like something. Like you said, like yeah, when you go to Fiji and you haven't seen it before, and you just some of the stuff they do, you just go, yeah. oh man, that's just. And they, but they can't show you how to do it because they, they've never been taught how to do it. They just know how to do it. Yeah. It's like the way they play their footy. They just know yes. how to do it. Yeah. Um, no, that's good, mate. Um, I, yeah. I'll, I hope we get some more um, involvement from Lloydies around um, the Indigenous communities. Um, so over your illustrious coaching career, mate, of 20 plus years, what's some of the lessons you've learned that you could pass on to um some, I, I say junior coaches, but new coaches. So yep. junior's not not an age for me. It's where they are on their, their journey. So someone that's starting out as a coach or yep. just, you know, done one or two years, what's some of the lessons that you could pass up that you've learned that you could pass on to, to those coaches? Yeah, I think, um, and you see a lot of this currently in regards to uh, well-being and mind, mindfulness, um, uh, keeping a journal, I think keeping a, a rugby journal and and just writing down the things that work for you uh, that don't work for you um, so you don't forget those lessons um, um, I, I think it's really important I Warren Rebilliard so he was the uh, national coach education for a very long time um, wonderful career in rugby played for for two blues but um, he, he's an incredible note taker and um, if it's good enough for him, uh, certainly good enough for me. And I, I, I definitely, I try to keep, I've got stuff everywhere, mate. I'm sitting here with bookcases and uh, like around me, I'd like to try and keep records of um, coaching plans and sessions, etc. So I think um, yeah, keeping a journal can be uh, a wonderful resource for you um, yeah. to, to, to use. Uh, chatting to other coaches is uh, absolutely critical. Uh, I've always found, and I know you've got some questions on it uh, a bit later on as far as education and development, but um, at, at any education, take the opportunity to chat to other coaches and um, don't be afraid of what you don't know. I think you, you, you've you got to park your ego and, um, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to ask questions because, yeah, I think... Uh, wonderful opportunity to, to, to learn. So they're, they're, they're probably a few of the, uh, the lessons. Um, I, don't, I, I think one of the things, I remember reading a, uh, a Wayne Bennett uh, book. I don't know if, uh, he's got a few books out, but um, I consider myself uh, quite an honest person, but uh, probably uh, too honest at times. And uh, I know one of his quotes is don't be brutally honest. Uh, that's, that's, probably a critical one with players and particularly more so today with our younger gen generations there. I, I found, look, I've learned this lesson this year. So I coach Colts at some districts in uh, four, sorry, it was five, six, seven, 2005, six, seven um, with uh, a, a Southern district, long-term Southern district servant, Don Picken. Um, and that generation or that, that, group of young man is very different to to what we're dealing with today and i'm uh, not uh, it's, uh yeah it's, it's no way in no way a criticism of to today's young people but yeah they're, they're, they've come through society at a different time and um yeah barking and yelling at them and i still do it don't get me wrong but um, i try to try to be a little bit more mindful because uh yeah the old school doesn't necessarily have the same impact uh that it did 
10, 15, 20 years ago. So I think you got to be really mindful of the, um, uh, the, the strategies that you use and probably being brutally, brutally honest isn't necessarily one that uh, gets the message through to a, a young 16, 17, 18 year old uh, at Colts level these days. Yeah, that's a good point, mate. Because um, I, looking back now, I hate to have been coached by me when I first started. <laughs> You know, just that whole, you know, anyway, we won't go there. But, and look, <clears throat> like we talked before about you have, you've got those aspirational players and the social players. Yep. Where the aspirational players, that brutal honesty may work with them. Yep. But that social player is just going to go, mate, I don't want to hear your shit. I don't, I'm just here to play footy with my mates. Like you can be honest with them to a point, but yes, you've got to, know that difference between you know do you use a big stick and a little carrot or did you use a little stick and a big carrot so yeah no i agreed mate <clears throat> i yeah, think no. um june particularly at junior level is yeah there's such a wide level of player aspirational um uh social uh participation and, and everything in between mm. you've got to what one understand the motivations of, of your players, yep. e each and every one of them, um, why why they're playing the game, and um, attempt to to come up with a, a balanced uh, session. Now, obviously, you can't meet everyone need everyone's needs at every given moment, but um, you, to to keep them engaged, you've you've absolutely got to get to know your individual. Yeah, and that sort of swings us around to that that next point of um, how do how do you keep your training environment, you know, um, in the winter when it's cold and it's raining and there's probably a dozen other things they could be doing, um, but they turn up. What? How do you structure your session so that and you you've got you know this kid that wants to be the next Waratah or whatever, and you got this kid that can't catch a cold in the middle of winter, playing in the same team um yep. how do you how do you structure your sessions around that and yeah just keeping the keeping the players whether they're kids or adults or whatever how do you keep them engaged for that whole hour and a half or two hours whatever it is that you train yeah it's something i've got a little mantra or i wouldn't maybe it's not a mantra but it's certainly when um when i was working in coach education and uh, <clears throat> um uh, yeah, uh, and, and development across a, a range of years, mate. So I was lucky enough to be exposed to a fair bit of research that one that Rugby AU and the state unions um, put time into. Also worked for the Australian Sports Commission for a number of years when I was in Perth. And um, that was in uh, community-based sport and coach ed and participation. So through that, I was exposed to a fair bit of research as well. And uh, understanding it goes back to understanding the motivations of children and, and young people is uh it's very rarely about winning um at junior level and mate you watch uh any under five sorry under sixes or under tens and even even older age groups uh they've lost the game they might get the sermon from the coach after the game about why they lost but uh within Within minutes, they're on to their next task as far as being active. They'll be kicking uh, footy with mates, running around, that they move on very quickly. So understanding those motivations. Um, one, fun is always the, the number one that comes up. Um, mates, playing with mates is, is really important. Uh, being developed. So that, that's about being challenged. But um, yeah that they understand that they're getting better uh, at an activity or a sport. Um, so I think understanding that uh, is really critical. And off the back of that, sometimes I have to remind myself, even mate, even with, with uh, men is if you don't keep it fresh and fun and it's all hard work, I, I think you can lose them. Um, it, and then they're, they're, they're not too dissimilar, I don't believe. It's got to be challenging. They got to, they need to understand that they're improving as well. So, yeah, mate, fun, uh, challenging. And um, uh, actually, the other one with young kids is active. 
So yeah. we're sitting there listening to a coach and still see it today uh, for 15 oh. minutes um, is in one ear out the other. Um, give them one minute chat, 14 minutes of activity as an example. Um, uh, yeah, that, that active, uh, really critical. Yeah, and learn to coach it on the run. Yeah, yep, absolutely, yeah. mate. So, and you get that from experience, don't you? Mm. Oh, um, absolutely, yeah. The coachable moment, it's called. So yeah. when, when to you know, mate, stop the entire group or maybe just chat to an individual on mm. the run and you, 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 learn, you, you learn that through experience, I believe, yeah. Yeah, and it's something that I know I struggled with as it, when I started coaching is just that when do I stop it? And once I've stopped it, what do I do? Yes. You know, we're now, like you said, now you've got that experience. Um, and my guys know I've stopped stuff and gone, guys, this looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> we, that's what we're, what I'm seeing is not what I pictured it's going to look like in my head. We're going to move on. Yes. Yeah. And just having that ability to do that. And the guys go, yeah, cool. No problem. And they, and they move on to the, whatever the next bit is. Um, I think they're depending what level you're at, but um, yep. it's ha having a discussion just recently, we, we organized through um, Todd Loudon and Duncan yep. Sharp, a couple of our coaches at uh, Southern Districts was a, a junior coach catch up. It was about a month ago, just as uh, it was largely as a social activity, but also an opportunity for junior coaches to chat to our district uh, coaches. And um is getting the players from, I reckon you can start doing it from 14, 15, difficult age groups, mind you, 14, 15, yeah. particularly boys, uh, that they, they know everything, but um, actually getting them to problem solve, you don't have to always have uh, yep. every answer. Um, you do that, you get that, that, that engagement. They feel like they have some ownership uh, in regards to what's happening uh, on field and, uh, training session into a game, yeah, you start to develop some some leadership and decision makers and, and problem solvers by doing that. So, yeah, getting them to come up with uh, some solutions, uh, I, I think it's a, a great way to uh, take a load off yourself, one, but um, to develop the individuals and the, the team whilst you're doing it. Oh, absolutely, mate. And I think, again, what what we struggle with in that early coaching journey is that silence. Like yep. we ask a question because we know what we want to hear. Yep. And if they haven't answered within two or three seconds, you go, blah, and you give them the answer and they run off and they still don't know what they're actually supposed to be doing. Yes. Yep. So, so um, I've said to some coaches, just be comfortable in the silence. Yeah. Yep. And if they give you the answer, that's not what you want. Explore why. Yes. Yep. Because they may they may have you know, they may actually give you something to add on to what you're trying to do, or if they're miles off, at least they're thinking about it. Yes. Yep. Agree. You know, and having and having that that ability just to um, be silent and let them think about it and let and let them know that that's I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to say a word until someone tells me some tells me this. You know, set the ground rules and. Kids will eventually pick, they pick it up quicker than we do. Yeah, I think that's where, like, as far as the communication um, and something as a, um, a presenter, an education presenter, yep. is that um, ask your question and how you ask it's really important if it's open yeah. or closed questioning and um, uh, then leading questions. If they're, mm. they're struggling, try and lead them. Um, to assist them find the the answer if particularly if they're, they're struggling massively but um yeah uh, I, I think you could go down a real uh, rabbit hole there as far as um um chatting about that but it, it is critical and you can find some pretty decent in information on um i think it's what are the, the australian sports commission's now called Oz sports or I think yeah I, yeah, but yeah they're they're a wonderful resource mate as far as our uh, coaching materials yeah yeah I've seen some of their stuff previously um, that and yeah and there's some really good research and around that well, not just research but just guys talking about it and you know seeing how it works and yep. and just YouTube stuff and there's some really good coaches that do it um, and it was something that I struggled with for ages is that that silence. 
Yes. Um, yeah. Once you sort of get in the habit of doing it, and <clears throat> I'm lucky at the moment because I'm with a senior team, so it's a bit easier for me to go. I'm just going to stand here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, where kids, you, you let it go too long. They, like you said, they're off doing something else, and you know. But yeah, it's yeah, a good think- skill. I think that's where too as a coach you give them all the answers well they don't become thinkers do they no no um and i think that's and again it's just me thinking the way i think is why we struggle every couple of couple of years with our playmakers because they play such a set structure that when it goes out of that structure they like you said we're not developing the thinker that goes, oh, hang on, what's, what's over there? Or well, yep. there's the space. So, um, yeah, we've got to develop those thinkers in the game. Uh, it's a massive issue, I think, at the oh, moment for Australian yeah. rugby is <clears throat> the, 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 the decision makers. And I, I think we've got to reflect really hard um, on our our coaching methodology. That, that's where uh, with Souths is, um, um, yeah, t- Todd, certainly his philosophy is that a game-based uh, yeah. activities and uh, match scenarios and trying to get the uh, the players to problem solve before uh, they l- led to an answer, I guess. Yeah, and that's, that's a good point, that game-based stuff um, and like the scenario stuff around, you know, if we've got a penalty in this area of the field, what what we, what should we be looking for? What you know, blah 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 blah. Um, yes. And there's a heap of stuff you can do around that. That game based stuff. That's that's just getting more and more traction. I think. Um, yes. Yeah. And I think a lot of coaches get caught on it because they think, oh, I haven't got enough to do a game based drill. But two v one is a game based drill. Yes. Yeah. Like ideally, yes, if you've got a, you know, you got two two sets of fifteen, you can do stuff. But if you've got two people, you can yep. play one v one. That's yes. That's a game. Yeah. Um, so don't. What I would think, say to young coaches is, don't think of the numbers you've got. Think of what you can do with those numbers. Yep. Um, I think um, and definitely. And then um, another thing with the, the game base, it quite often looks uh, from the sidelines messier than. Yep. Uh, a, a very managed um, activity. So um, you've got to be comfortable uh, with that. And I certainly know I've been challenged recently just um, with, yeah, letting some of that stuff go. And you, you you feel like you at times don't have that control as a coach. And yeah, you, I, I think it's natural as a coach, you want to feel like you're in control, but yeah. um, that the, that the reality is out on field, you you as a coach have no control. Uh, no. And quite often the players are in a situation where it is very chaotic. So, yeah, um, um, putting them in that environment at, at training uh, makes plenty of sense. Yeah, and I think if you can get them into that, that chaos environment or that, you know, you're looking at it from the sideline, it looks absolute rubbish, but you're hitting your key marks of what you want to do. Yep. And that's when your questioning can come in as well. Yes. Like, yep. why, why did we run that? Why did we, what What made you go left instead of right? What made you, you know, say so those big open-ended questions. And Yes, yep. Um, I can't remember who it was. I was listening to someone, so, you know, pretty high-level coach. And he's at, he actually says to his playmakers now, not why did you do that? What did you see? Yes, yep. Yes, because sometimes he might go, well, I didn't throw that pass because I saw that he was half a step back than what he was supposed to be. And this, this was the right, and you go, cool. So that's how, that's how he was developing his playmakers just by changing the nuance of his question as to what did you see rather than why did you do that? Yeah. Great strategy. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought I'm going to start doing that next year. If we ever get to play rugby again. Well, that's, I, I think that uh, picture probably then embeds on their brain a little bit more. Yeah. So they can talk through it. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, and I think it, he came about it because he was talking to the, what must have been the 10, and they wanted to play this play that way. And they said, why didn't, why didn't you kick it? Why didn't you do that? And he goes, because when I looked up, the blindside winger was out of position and limping. 
Yes. He said, so I just put the ball into the corner. Yeah. And like it went into touch. He goes, and the coach went, well, yeah, that, that's actually the right option to take because he's identified this, this and this. And that's when he, he reflected on it. He changed his whole questioning around, you know, what did you see? Yes. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's really, that's really good. So, um, no, that's, that's awesome, mate. Some, some good tips there for, for some young coaches. Um, how do you think us as coaches can improve the game, whether it's at the grassroots, probably more at the grassroots level than as the players go up, but we can have that effect on players. You know, like you, you've coached some players that have gone on to other things and I've coached players that have played in rep teams. Um, so how, how can we as grassroots coaches make a difference to those players or to the game itself? Yeah, I think um, probably wanting to continue to, to learn the game. The game goes <clears> through, <throat> I guess, some cycles and, and it continually changes. Um, I, I mentioned just a little bit earlier about um, my previous Colts experience to, to this one. I, I've got to adapt uh, my, my style of coaching. Um, so that, that'll help improve uh, individuals, making sure that... Um, I guess I'm uh, staying relevant and um, up to date with um, different trends in the game. Yeah. Um, mate, parking my ego. Uh, I've been involved in rugby for a long time. I think sometimes you can, uh, well, coaches, so say I'm coaching an under 14 boys team. I, I don't know everything there is to know about rugby. Um, I think uh, like, a, a balancing coaching. I really, the current coach, uh, well, actually a number of coaches, but um, current coach I work with, uh, with our under 18s junior team, um, Dave War. Uh, he's brought that team through under sixes. I, I came in about uh, under 12s to, to start assisting him. But uh, having that balance, knowing that there's times where I've got to step back um, whilst I'm, um, I've got to, I guess got a lot more experience than Dave. What he does do, uh, he knows the boys really, really well. And the times I've got to take a back step uh, and and let him um, uh, coach his style. So yeah, uh, understanding that balance. Um, so park in your ego, uh, ab absolutely. And uh, probably the the next biggest one. It, it was, not, not the next biggest, but one of the most important things is uh, winning at all costs is an absolute no-no for me, I, I reckon, at uh, junior level. Um, I love winning uh, and I coach to win, but it's not the be-all and end-all. Only in any competition, one team is the competition winner, uh, but that doesn't make the rest of the, uh, the competition losers in my eyes. Um, and particularly at junior level, co coaching and junior development is so much more than winning, mate. And that might sound like a bit of a uh, soapbox, but mate, I absolutely believe it. And um, uh, I try to, on any given Saturday or Sunday, juniors on a Sunday, is uh, keep, keep, keep that at the, the forefront of my mind. I'll coach hard and I want my players to play hard, but... Um, yeah, I, I'm probably as disappointed with a, a win and a poor performance um, yes. as opposed to certain losses, you know. I, I, I can absolutely wear a loss if, I, I, you know, and it might be a big loss. If I know my team's had a red-hot crack, they've given everything, I'm uncomfortable with that. Yeah, no, that's a good point, mate. Um, and I think a lot of coaches, when we start out, we're all – focused on the win because that's where we think our next role is going to come from. If I win all this, these games, I'm going to get this job. With it. But, you know, even, even the guys that get those, um, the, not the good jobs, but like the higher up jobs, very rarely they're looking at, you know, the win loss ratios. They're looking at what they've done with the, you know, what they've done with the, t as a team, what they've done with players. Um, but yeah, that development Definitely. side of it's really good. Um, yeah. I, did that oh, I think yeah, all of those coaches, mate, it's a great point, is that they'll talk about the process 
Um, yeah. Not not the result. Yeah, it's it's about the process, and the result takes takes care of itself. And um, I think that that yeah, that's spot on. Um, mate. Um, the, the the other thing with juniors that I see a lot of is uh, coaches. Um, uh, implementing adult practices as, as if they're coaching a super rugby uh, squad. And yeah, that, that, that's when the fun goes out, the, the, the individual development. And um, yeah, I can't, I, you, you can't expect a 13-year-old boy or girl to, to behave like an adult because they're just not. Yeah, and you can see that coach and you go, you've seen that on YouTube or on a highlights reel or something, because you just know they've they haven't got any con context around that drill. Yes. Yeah. Where if they actually looked at the drill and went, okay, that's what they're trying to achieve. How can I make that work for my under twelves? Yeah. Um, and as you know, a lot of the drills that they do at the elite level are no different to the drills they do at junior level. It's just you know faster, smaller space like. They just change the constraints on it. Um, yes, yeah. You can, oh, mate, I've, I've been there as much as you have, and you're looking and you're just going, that guy's seen that on YouTube because he's got, and I, I said to a coach one day, what are you trying to do? And he goes, what do you mean? I said, what, what's all this, fan like, you've set all this stuff up. Why? What? What? Tell me what you want to achieve. Yes. Oh, this, this, and this. I go, well, okay, how are you going to do that? Oh, well, when I saw it online, I went, yeah, mate, you're coaching under 10s for a start. Yes, you know, yeah. um, break, and, and I tried to help him break it down. He just wanted to do his own thing, but I think it's yeah. a good point. Bully is actually uh, obviously the coach understanding what they're attempting to achieve, but making sure the players also understand. And doesn't mm -hmm. matter whether they're under ten, if they they understand the why, they're a bigger chance of executing the, the activity. So yeah, yeah, I think it's a great point. Um, and something, look, I think as coaches, we're, we're all guilty of uh, reverting back to, you know, uh, all, all, all um, habits like, um, yep. yeah, um, uh, re reverting to habits. But, um, yeah, and making sure the players understand why um, yeah, is pretty, pretty damn important, if you ask me. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And the capabilities of the players, are, yeah. Um, but you see it, I see it all the time and you'd, you'd be the same, you'd see it and you just go, you've either seen, you know, the first grade team do that drill or someone's done it and you just think you're going to run it and it, yeah, it doesn't work. Yep. Um, this will be a good conversation, mate, knowing, knowing the roles that you've had, um, the coach education side versus coach development. Yes. So, yep. Um, coach education for me is your level one course, your level two course, whatever, you know, whatever country you're in, whatever they call it, you turn up this day, you sit there for a couple of days and you probably actually leave after the two or three days and actually go, oh, I probably actually didn't learn anything out of it because you just fried as opposed to the stuff we do as coaches to make us better coaches. Yes. Yep. Well, mate, I, I think they go hand in hand, obviously, uh, an education event um, and development. I think there needs to be uh, a balance there. But I guess you, you could go to you could go to a thousand education events and not become a better coach. Uh, yeah. If you're not able to apply what you've learned. And that's where mate, um, I, I think one of my most enjoyable um experience was 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 doing uh, my level three um coach accreditation in 2011 and it was uh, the, the uh it was 12 months of, of education and that experience in itself was fantastic but chatting to um a range of other coaches uh at the course i would suggest and the the, the coach educators as well that having those one-on-one uh, -on -one chats or group discussions outside of the education, I found that the most valuable, and I would suggest uh, that that was development, having those yeah. uh, discussions and um, brainstorming, um, picking people's brains and 
Uh, absolutely. As far as development and actual doing it, I, I think, mate, with this current uh, generation coming through, is we'll find they're, they're very much visual learners because they're on devices all, all the time. I, I, certainly my young fellas, phone, computers, PlayStation. So they don't want to just hear um, like a, a, a traditional education setting uh, or learn in that traditional education setting. They want to they want to develop through through doing and uh, watching something. So a, a great example might be at uh, Colts training, um, and you can do this with with, with any age, of, well, potentially any age group. Is you know take some video of your session, have the iPad there. Uh, you might might be having some issues with your 10 as far as decision making and actually show them uh, immediately uh, what's going on. So, um, yeah, I think that that development side of things, that the ability to, to develop during a session, um, yeah, quite critical. And so, same with the coaches, mate, is I think your, your learning experiences are a lot better on the job, aren't they? You know, like you go yeah. to school, you go to you like picking up algebra at school. What am I going to use this for? Well, uh, if you're on the job and I'm not saying algebra because I've never used it, but um, you know, uh, those life experiences on the job um, resonate a, a lot more than that in that classroom education setting. I don't know if I've sort of yeah, no, you're uh, right. Complicated yeah. that, but um, no, it's and that's the thing for me is that, um, and one thing that probably 2020 did teach me a lot was that you know there's all these WhatsApp groups out. There. I mean, about three or four different WhatsApp groups with coaches from all around the world <laughs> and like doing this stuff. And you know what I've found is that um, you might not get invited to an event. But if you ask, you very rarely get told no. Yes, yeah. Like if, you know, and and I know you well enough, if, if one of the under 10s coaches come up to you and say, oh, gals, do you mind if I sit on the sideline on Thursday and watch you coach the Colts? You're going to go, yeah, no problem, mate. Yep. You know, like, um, and there's a lot of coaches Definitely. out there are quite happy yep. to, to do that. Um, but I think okay. as junior, co well, as young coaches, we're too scared to ask. Yeah. I think that's where like um, coaches innately uh, get involved because they want to give, they want to yep. uh, impart or pass on the knowledge that they've learned. And oh, look, sometimes um, the, the, the junior coach, he's the last man to uh, realize everyone's taken a, a step <laughs> back. But, um, and so he gets stuck in the job, but look, anyone that's coached for a period of time, you know, two, three years is somebody who wants to give, um, give to the game, uh, whether it's giving back because they've come through as a player. Um, but yeah, coaches give to the game. So chatting to coaches and picking their brain, we, we love it. We, we, we feel good about uh, transferring some, some knowledge and, and helping, uh, I guess, a, a colleague out. And that's something um, we, we, we set up these junior programs at Southern Districts, mate, for 16s and 18. So um, the, 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 the end game of that is to try and get more kids through to uh, more boys through to Colts and more young girls through to our Rebelettes, our women's program. Yep. But uh, along the way, um, so we're working with 13 to 7 year, 17 year old girls and 15 to 18 year old boys. They come into our program for 12 weeks uh, from November to March uh, in their off season. And the whole idea of that is they go back to their clubs, uh, better players. What we're going to roll out this year is a coach mentoring program. And we, we see that as a wonderful opportunity to try and develop coaches. But within that program, yeah, there'll be great opportunity for them to uh, participate uh, in our sessions, but then you yeah, ask a whole heap of questions. And absolutely, you go to that development. That's, that's, that's a wonderful development opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that mentor is probably something that, again, we overlook as young coaches. Um, yep. And again, I've, I've probably, in the last 12 months, I've probably got three or four guys that, that have coached at a good level that you can just 
bounce stuff off. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, and they'll and every now and again, you know, one of them will say, "What about this?" And you just go, "I don't know." Yeah. And like, if if you know, don't don't be afraid to say you don't know. I oh, made it's it has to be one of the toughest games to coach uh, rugby oh. union. I like I've, I I grew up playing rugby league and then uh, trans sort of got involved through a mate who was playing rugby union. I was a late start to to rugby union and um, man, I'm still learning uh, about mm. the game. Twenty five. Well, when I think back, so we're talking thirty five years if I include my playing. Thirty five years later, I mate don't know a, a great deal about the scrum uh, and the line out. Like I know more than the, the average uh, punter, but um, yeah, mate, um, uh, asking questions and even being challenged by, by other coaches. Uh, yeah. Really important to, to your development for sure. Yeah. No, that's really good, mate. And it was really good to get your insight into that, knowing what you've done in that development role over yep. a number of years. So um, no, that's that's really good, mate. Um, well, just the last question. Um, what advice would you give yourself when you were a new coach, yep. knowing what you know now? So if you could get in a time machine and go back to that first sort of six months, 12 months when you'd started coaching, what advice would you give yourself? I guess um, we, we've touched on it a few times. Uh, you <clears throat> call it an open mindset these days is, yeah, be, be open to uh, trying new things, being challenged. I think that's really critical. Uh, I've, I've definitely uh, got a fixed mindset to, at, at times uh, in a range of areas in my life. So uh, being more open-minded. But um, the big one for, for me would be uh, not to stress, mate, <laughs> is, um, yeah, don't, don't let stress get to you and, I uh, learn how to manage it. And I absolutely um, um, attempt to do that these days. And I find it, I guess, that the whole coaching experience uh, uh, a lot easier and a lot, probably a lot more manageable and a lot more enjoyable uh, as a result of that. Um, that might sound a bit strange as far as uh, being stressed, but um, being a competitive person, I, I do like to win, but yeah. Um, not stressing, not overthinking, you know, just yeah. And I think at the junior level, like you, I think you touched on it before, like you'll stress for days over it, and the kids have moved on, they're on, and even at even at, se at senior level, unless it's sort of the you know, that first division thing, like reserve grade and third grade, they're on their third or fourth beer, and you're still in the change room stressing over what decision they made, and yeah, they, yeah, they've moved on, mate, you know, yeah. unless you're sort of at that that first division, like that um, shoot shield level or, or that first grade level, most of the players, they just move on so quick looking at the next thing and you're still stressing about it and not sleeping. Yeah. And, you know, I know I used to wake up and, you know, what if what if this happens and what if someone's and it's just like, no, oh, don't do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. The stress just can really take over. A hundred percent, mate. I know, like, so those two semifinals at Shoot Shield that I referred to, mate, it was like I'd had a death in the family, which is, yeah. mate, look, and reflecting on is bloody ridiculous. In it? Yeah. Like, it's just... Um, yeah, it's a game of footy. Yeah, just <laughs> madness. But, um, yeah, it's something, mate, I, I use meditating uh, these days, which as a young fellow would have said, are oh, you kidding yourself? But um, mm. I find that, and that, that, that helps me keep calmer in... Um, um, stressful situation. Probably my assistant coach and manager might say otherwise uh, at Colts level this year, but um, I definitely know I'm able to um, yeah, keep a, be a little bit uh, more grounded in, um, I guess, higher pressure situations, mate. And again, that comes with experience. Yep. Yeah. Mate, the sun will come up tomorrow. Yeah, pretty much. You know, and it's a, it's it's not a job like it's not you know it's not what you're living off. Yeah. You know, even if, even if they get ready, yeah, well, I've still got my other job to go back to, and something else will come up. And yeah, you know, um, at, at the level that we coach at anyway. So, mate, this has been awesome. Um, there's some really good good things in there that I think people will take. Um, I've got a couple of pages of notes here. Um, 
as we went through. So I hope people, I know people will get some stuff out of the stuff we talked yeah, about. So right? it's been really good to talk to you, mate. Um, like I said, I'll let you know when this goes to air. Yeah, and, love um, to. Mate, no, nah, all really good to talk to you and we'll have to catch up again soon. Mate, really enjoyed it. It was, well, I guess what you provided uh, for me is an opportunity to self-reflect, mate. So um, it was nice sort of remembering uh, some of the, the, the great things that I've done and been involved in and great people uh, I've been able to meet uh, through yeah. this, mate. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And I think, like, all the, all the guests I've had and I asked them, like, their biggest disappointment and their biggest you know the greatest moment their greatest moments are always bigger than the disappointments yeah, yeah. which is and i just go yeah i've just had to like you said did a bit of reflection on it like you said there were a couple of games of footy that we lost at the time it was horrible but that's it you know yeah. but seeing that kid do this this and this that was that was way better yeah, yeah. no greatest mate, awesome. is always yet to come too mate oh absolutely mate absolutely the greatest is still out there we haven't seen it yet um so, no, that no, was really good, mate. Um, again, thanks for your time. Pleasure, mate. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, mate. Stay in touch. I will. Thank you. Their own ball. That is monstrous. <laughs>